This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. I just wanted to mention that I realize as I'm making these videos about halfway through them that a new version of Apex was released. I'm working with 18.1 and I believe 18.2 is currently available. Just be aware that if you're working with the latest version of Apex, it's going to look a little different than what I'm showing you in the video series, but I will not upgrade Apex. What I want to do primarily is look at where we are overall based on our data model and what we have built up to this point in the web application. There are things that remain to be done. And I also want to add a little organization to what we have done and what we will do in the future. It is not an unusual at all to leave the things that are core to your application till the very end of your development. So the primary purpose of this application is to process animals, receive them at a shelter, and then place them. In doing that, we have many support tables and we have support forms and reports. Let's take a look at what we still have to do, which is provide the functionality for our primary purpose, intake of animals and placement of animals. I do want to add some organization to what we're doing in the development application. I had originally thought that we would develop and then copy final pages, forms, and reports to a production application. But since I'm doing this kind of on the fly, I haven't laid out a structure for numbering pages. I'm running into problems when we want to move pages over to the production application. So right now I just want to focus on getting organization in the development application. So here's a screenshot of what I currently have. If your page numbers vary from mine, it makes no difference whatsoever. I've been very casual about the page numbering and let Apex number them. I do prefer to have a numbering scheme. So for example, put data maintenance forms and reports for reference tables, I would put them in a 200 series or in an 80 series. But I haven't done that as we've built this application. So I'm going to add page groups to help us organize the pages. We'll have a page group for parent pages, those home pages for the menu subcategories in the navigation menu. And we have obviously animals, that's our, our number one focus in this database and application. But in support of that, we have people and we have data maintenance. I'm going to do a other simply to identify pages, I think, that will ultimately be removed from the production application. So let's take a look at the data model. So we have forms and reports for persons and employees. We have a useful report and form for animals. And we have some data maintenance. We have forms and reports for breed and status, I believe. We still have to do some other data maintenance forms and reports. And we need to create master detail forms that allow us to look at an animal record and create or view related transactions. Transactions would be intake, transfer, placement, whereas activities would be things such as medical procedures or grooming or training. Remember way back at the beginning, I said there's a very good argument for making activities part of transactions, but I wanted to have two separate tables just because of some of the things I want to accomplish in the, in the educational aspect of the videos. So we still need to build functionality for our core purpose, the intake and placement of animals. I'm logged in 
as one of the developers in the Animal Shelter workspace and we're going to work with the development application daily operations. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to utilities and notice over here page specific utilities. We can do page groups so I'm going to select that and I'm going to create the groups I talked about. I'm going to do parent pages home pages for groups of web pages in the application. And I'll create that. I'll create one for people. And I'll just put people related reports and forms. I'll create one for animals. I'll create one for data maintenance. I'll just call that maintenance. And that will be for reference tables, lookups, reports, and forms. And then finally, I said I'd create a generic other. and say pages that might not be needed. I'm kind of at cross purposes sometimes here because I'll create things because I want to show you differences in some of the features and at the same time it's not really how I would want the final application to look. So let's come back to the application and before I started this video I went through and looked at the pages and made some notes as to how the pages fit in to the overall application. So I'm not doing anything with the home page. I'll start with list of animals. I'll click that. And that's going to be, notice over here it's selected as a page. Over here in the properties you have page group and I can select and that would be animals. That goes into the animals group and I can save that. I can move up through to page three or the next page, whatever the number is, and that's an animal form. It is one, however, I think is not going to be useful to us. If I run that, let me get logged in, this is not a form that we would continue to use. We've done a better form, a more functional form for animals. I would come back to Page Designer and set that to Other and save that. We have animal info LOVs. We are using that, so I'll put that under animals. The next one in my pages is for status LOV, and that goes under maintenance. That goes hand in hand with the next report, which is the actual form for maintaining status data, and so that goes under maintenance. The next page is one of the navigation menu parent pages and that's for animals and I am going to put that under parent pages not under animals. So that's the home page if you will for the sub menu navigation menu related to animals. Then I'll go to the next page and that's the parent page for people. So I'll do parent page and save that and then the next page in my list of pages is data maintenance and that'll be a parent page. Save that. The next page is page 13 and I think that belongs in other. So I'll put that in other. I don't think we'll end up using that. The next page I have is page 23 or page 22 and I created this simply to show the difference in coding when you're doing a cascading LOV and you're using the interactive grid. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in other because the functionality that's provided is handled by another pair of reports and form. The next thing is the list of people. So I'll put that in people and save it. 
This goes hand in hand with the interactive grid for person information. So I'll go to the next page, which is 51. Notice there I was doing some deliberate page numbering. And I'll switch this over to people, save that. And the next one is uh, interactive grid master detail, I believe. Yes, it is, because I can look over here and see that. And it's going to go to people. Then I have an example of an interactive report. Again, I created that so we could see the contrast between interactive grid and interactive report. I'm going to keep this in the people section rather than the other section because we may use this. So I need to actually go up to page 55, RPT employees. And I'll put that in people and save that. Then I, we have two more maintenance a report and form for breed, and I'll put that in maintenance. And then the form itself, I'll put in maintenance. If you have other pages, you can group them or not group them ho however you wish. If I come back to the application, then I could say I want to see other as, and notice what we have here really is uh, like an interactive report. I can hit other and then I see the pages in the application that I've classified as other. So of course I could do people and hit enter and see the pages related to people. Even if people is not part of the title of that page, it's in that group. So the other main thing I want to do here is look at the shared components, list of values, and figure out what are the remaining maintenance reports and forms that I need. So I did a copy paste of this list of LOVs and put it into Word so I could use some color coding. Now keep in mind I'm looking at the LOVs because those work with reference tables, lookup tables. That's why it'll guide me in what I need to do, what, I, what else I need to create. If it's static, we're not going to worry about it. That has to be maintained by one of the developers inside of Apex if you want to make an addition to those lists. But we do need, in yellow, we need a report and form so we can add a subcategory for activities, and we need a report and form so we can add categories. We don't need anything else for things such as animal list and client list. Those come off our primary tables, not reference tables. And so we have several LOVs that use those, and we don't need to do anything else at this point. What we have in green are the report and forms we have already built as maintenance, and we need one for zip or zip code. I'm going to come back to Apex and go back to the application and I'll create a page. It'll be a form. It'll be a report with form. And I will do a numbering. I will number this 84. And this is going to be category LOV and category. And that should be 85. It's very easy to get the numbering out of sync. And then I can add it to the group right now. And so that goes to maintenance. And then I click next. I do want it to create a, a navigation item. So it'll go under maintenance. And that will be for category. I'll have it managed by the primary key and have that created. So I can run that. And I see the two categories for activities right now, medical and grooming. If I go to the form, remember that by default, the primary key is hidden. And I want to display that. So I'll come back to Edit in Page Designer for the form and come down to the item for primary key and set that to display only. I have to give it the label. That'll be category ID and save that. I can switch this from text area to text field. 
that item was beyond the recording area and save that and run that. I'll do one more edit and say for category start new row no and then I will come back and do another page. I could have done it right there from page designer. Do form, report with form. I'm going to do 86. This will be subcategory LOV 87. That goes under maintenance. Select my subcategory table, have it managed by primary key value. You can make the edits yourself to the display of the primary key. Let me go ahead quickly and add one more page. This will be for zip code, form, report. I'm going to make this 88. And this will be zip, LOV, and 89, zip, data. And that goes under maintenance. That'll come off the zip code table, managed by primary key. If I save and run that, I'm seeing the zip codes, but when I go in to edit, I don't see the zip code. This is the example in the data model where I decided not to use a sequence a surrogate key, the zip code field itself is the primary key, so it is essential that this be displayed. So I'll come here to the properties for that hidden field and set that not to display only, but set it to a text field. And that will be zip code. Save that and run that. I'll do a few more edits to this. I'm going to say city at start new row no, state start new row no, and state name start new row no. And save that. And then it occurs to me that I need to come down to subcategory and also make an edit here. So I'll go to subcategory. Here's my listing. If I, go to, if I go to the form, then I need to show the primary key, and so that will be sub cat ID. And I need to use an LOV for the category. I don't want somebody typing in a category here. So this needs to be changed from a text field to a select list. Go down to our list of values. It's a shared component. We already have this and it will be the activity category LOV which is off the recording screen here. I don't need extra values. Display null. That'll be fine. Save that and run that. Just for looks I'll also do subcategory. I'll switch that to text field. Add new row. No this LOV, I'll just put category, change the label, and also add new row, no, save that, run that. So now we have a good working form for this reference table, subcategory. So coming back to the application, we took a look at the data model and decided that our core purpose of managing animals at the animal shelter, we haven't completed the functionality for that, but we'll be doing that in the next few videos. And we also added some organization to the pages in our development application. See you in the next video.